I. Educational and informative. Today on Mystery Hunters. We're trying to capture mysterious and mythical beasts. At least on camera. I'm setting a high-tech photo trap to catch a mysterious beast that attacks farm animals and has been able to outsmart the British Marines. Doubting Dave's going to show you how to turn your pet into a scary mystery beast. Beast! Tell the world. And I'm braving the waves off Vancouver Island to catch a glimpse of the sea monster that's said to roam the coast. This is Mystery, Mystery Hunters. Hunters. Turn to Mystery Hunters. A mysterious creature is terrorizing this English countryside. It's been savagely attacking animals and livestock. People here call it the Beast. Could it be a supernatural creature? I'm here to track down the truth about the Beast of Britain. Eric Lay is a local farmer. The Beast killed close to a hundred of his sheep. For two months, something attacked his sheep almost every single night. He would get the, uh, the frame of the sheep left. The rib bones would be cleaned out like that. They lick clean. It left only the skeleton of the sheep. Whatever this was, was pouncing off the top of the hedges. The beast would watch from a distance, and then suddenly spring up from behind a row of hedges. He tried to catch it. Eric used his lambs as bait. He tied teeny bags filled with poison around his sheep's necks. He hoped that when the creature attacked, it would swallow the poison, killing itself. But it didn't work. When they put the poison on the lambs, the beast started going after the ewes, the older sheep. The beast seemed to know what they were up to. It was something that was one step ahead of us all the time. It's incredible how smart this creature seems to be. It was too smart for us, especially. What do you think it was? At the time, we hadn't got a clue what it was. Whatever was doing this was professional. It disturbed nothing. Just come and got what it wanted and was gone. A savage animal with the intelligence of a human. Could the beast be supernatural? Other farmers also reported unexplainable killings of their animals. That's when the British Marines started Operation Beastie. They staked out the countryside in search of the beast. They found nothing. A phantom animal that leaves no trace. Maybe the beast really is something supernatural. There are lots of legends about similar mysterious beasts. Could this one be true? Now it's my turn to try and track down the beast. A giant sea serpent has been spotted right off this beach, and it's not the first time it's been seen. In fact, people have reported seeing a strange sea creature around here for hundreds of years. They call it the Cadborosaurus, or Caddy for short. Could a sea monster really be living in this bay? Tyler Innes is a biologist. While walking here at sunset, he saw something very strange. I saw a splash in the water at the corner of my eye and looked over and there was some strange animal in the water. What did the thing look like? It was long. It was 15 to 20 feet long. It was going really fast, rolling up and down in the water. It was black, very dark. It almost looked like an inner tubes in the water, a, a row of inner tubes. Did you get to see its head? No, I didn't. I couldn't see the profile of of the head, but there was something sticking out of the water and then a body behind it. So do you think Caddy's real? Probably it is. Um, 
I, nobody's really explained if it is or not, but if it is real, I think it lives here. The Cadborosaurus is named after this bay. This is Cadboro Bay. There have been more sightings of the creature here than anywhere else. Paul LeBlanc is an oceanographer. He wrote a book on Caddy. He's spoken with many witnesses like Tyler, who all describe the creature the same way. It has a long neck with a head that looks kind of like a giraffe's or horse's head, and it has a few bumps that stick out over the water. So what do you think people are seeing? People are probably seeing an animal which is unknown to science, like an animal which has not been caught yet for strange reasons. Uh, maybe it's rare. Have any of the eyewitnesses managed to take a picture of the creature? There is actually a picture that was taken from a specimen that was found dead inside the stomach of a whale. The whale had eaten this animal, and the people who were cutting the whale apart opened up the whale and found this inside. And at the time, they thought, this is Caddy. This is the animal that people described as Cadborosaurus. So we really do have solid evidence. Did they preserve the body? No, they didn't preserve the body. They put it in a barrel of acetone, they showed it to the public, and it disappeared. So without a body, it's really hard to convince zoologists that this is a real animal. If this is a picture of a dead sea monster, maybe there are live ones out there. I found someone who might have real video images of Caddy. Could his high-tech cameras have caught something? What's that? It's not hard to mistake one animal for another in the wild. Cougars look like cheetahs, rhinos look like hippos, wolves look like dolphins. I'm just kidding. Rhinos don't look like hippos. But I did get a strange email from Anna Claudia Orsini about wolves and dolphins. Take a look on the Mystery Illustrator. Dear Doubting Dave, I heard that dolphins come from a type of wolf. Chomp. Woof, woof. Is this true? Well, Anna, I'm telling her. Dolphins did not come from a kind of wolf. Oh. But it looks like they did come from an animal that lived on land. 60 million years ago, there were lots of large, primitive animals roaming around. One kind was like a big, fat, early version of the hippopotamus. Another was like a giant wolf with hooves. Both these animals lived on land, but they also ate fish from the water. Over millions of years, as they adapted to become better at fishing, one of them evolved into the dolphin. But scientists still aren't sure which one. But even if the dolphin evolved from a wolf-like creature, it wasn't really a wolf. The same way we humans may have evolved from ape-like creatures that weren't really apes. Anyway, one thing's for sure. Nope. Scientists are just beginning to study which animals come from where. And every day they're surprised by new discoveries. Right, buddy? We'll be right back with more Mystery Hunters. We now return to Mystery Hunters. A mysterious creature has been terrorizing this English countryside. People here call it the Beast. No one's ever been able to catch it. Not even the British Royal Marines. Now it's my turn to look for the beast. Danny Bamp 
Wapping was with the military during their hunt for the beast. He says he knows how to catch it on camera. Yeah, let's go. This is a great spot. Yeah, let's uh, put it onto this tree okay. just here. Yeah, it's be perfect. It's a waterproof camera, so you can leave it out in the wild. Not even the military was able to get a picture of the beast because it was too smart to come near them. But with Danny's camera, the beast might take a picture of itself. So this camera is trigger operated. If anything crosses its infrared radar, the camera catches it. Our mission, to capture the beast. What do you think the beast is? I mean, it seems to appear and disappear without a trace. Do you think it could be something supernatural? Well, no, I don't think it is. Danny thinks the beast is really a big cat, like a puma or a jaguar. And if it is a big cat, maybe Danny's infrared camera can catch a picture of it overnight. Why do you think the beast is a big cat? Well, the evidence that's left behind really suggests that they're big cats. And a sheep kill, for example, if it was done by a fox or a dog, would be very messy. There would be fur everywhere. Whereas with a, with a, with a big cat, it can kill a sheep by just breaking its neck and, and very clean and, and hardly any mess. Danny also has evidence of paw marks, which he says were left behind by these big cats. Have you ever captured one on camera? I haven't personally caught one on camera. It's something that I've been trying to do as a filmmaker for years. But several people have been in the right place at the right time with a video camera. Check out these eyewitness videos. Danny says as many as 2,000 people a year in Britain think they're seeing big cats. Big cats like pumas are not supposed to run wild in Britain. But do they? Even if the camera doesn't find something, maybe I can get close to one. Are sea monsters living in these waters? This is a photo of an unknown sea creature that was swallowed by a whale. The photo was taken more than 60 years ago, but people are still seeing mysterious creatures swimming out there. Now a group called Caddy Scan is trying to catch a live Cadborosaurus on videotape. Jason Walton is using high-tech cameras to look for a caddy where people have already seen one. His cameras take pictures of anything that moves. Like right here, we do have a sea lion that we caught this year, and you can see it as it slowly swims by. We just got to hope for something that uh, looks like a sea serpent. So a caddy could swim by at this very moment? You got it. We're hoping anyway. But you can't watch the entire coastline. How do you know where to aim your cameras? When eyewitnesses phone us up, they take us to the location, and we can set up our equipment, and that gives us the best chance of recording something. This one's worked really well. We've had it set up for two years. Why don't we go there and have a look? Sure, let's go. Jason installed the cameras on Bob Iverson's property. Bob has seen Caddy from his house. He was sitting in his backyard one day looking out at the water. When all of a sudden these three big humps came up, black, like the size of truck tires, big truck tires, then they were down, then they were up, then they were down, and it was gone. Tyler said that he also saw something that looked like tires. Do you think if you had had a camera that night, then maybe you would be able to get a picture of it? No, even if I had the camera right here, it would have been too late. That's why he had a special camera set up. The camera is always ready, so when it comes by, we can get a picture. Well, I hope you guys get a good shot of Caddy, but I think I'm going to use my own camera and try and find him for myself. All right, thanks, guys. If there is a family of sea monsters out there, I've got to look for them where they live. If you see anything big, don't get too close.
This can't be happening. We gotta get away. Not bad, eh? <laughs> Lots of people think they have video evidence of terrifying beasts. But the strange creatures caught on tape could just be regular animals. Here's how you can make your own pet look like a mystery beast. You can do this with your dog, your cat, your bunny rabbit, or whatever. First, if you shoot your pet from up close, everybody will see that he's just your pet. But if you shoot him from far away and keep the camera moving and unfocused, it's hard to tell what he is. Pretty much all video footage of monsters and aliens that people claim is real looks like this. It's tough to prove or disprove because you can't really tell what you're seeing. Second, if you shoot your pet from above, he looks small and cute. But if you shoot him from below, he looks huge and scary. Third, try using mini versions of some life-size stuff in your movie. Like food on a picnic blanket. Show people next to the life-size stuff so we see how big it is. Then, let your pet sniff around the mini versions so he looks like a giant. Many classic monster movies used miniature props to make their monsters look huge. Now remember when you're shooting this stuff that your pet has a life too, so be respectful if he isn't in the mood to cooperate. All right, boy. Fetch. No, that's fine. I'll get it. I knew we should have used a retriever. We now return to Mystery Hunters. There's a mysterious creature loose in the British countryside, and it's attacking farm animals. Could it be a big cat like a puma, or something else on the prowl? Robin Godbour is a zookeeper at the Dartmoor Wildlife Park. He also thinks the beast could be a big cat. Where do these big cats come from? Uh, well, the ones that we've got in the country now are almost certainly descendants of the original ones which were released into the wild in about 1976. Robin tells me that people used to keep dangerous wild cats as pets. But in the 1970s, it became illegal, and a lot of people just set them free in the country. So you think that they could still be out there? Yeah, they're widespread throughout the whole of the British Isles. We're still getting reports coming in almost every day. Is the beast that's been mysteriously attacking farm animals a supernatural creature? Or a big cat abandoned by its owner? Could the beast be an abandoned exotic pet like a puma or a jaguar? If animals had escaped then in 1976, that's a long time ago now, and anything that escaped then mm -hmm. would probably have died of old age by now. Charlie Wilson works for the government. He has videos people sent in of what they think is the beast. Charlie investigated them all. It turns out they're just regular house cats. Then Charlie showed me animal tracks people sent in of what they think is the beast. There's this one, for example. It does look like a cat print, but... It's awfully small. Yeah, look at the size. <laughs> it's tiny. I mean, again, that is clearly within the size range of a domestic cat. Mm -hmm. This one is a lot bigger, but Charlie's lab proved it to be two dog prints, one overlapping the other. And get this. Charlie thinks dogs are responsible for many of the attacks. Do you think a pack of dogs could have killed your lambs? No. I haven't seen a couple of previous experiences of dog attacks on sheep. The sheep were frightened to death. There was wool everywhere. It was just a, just a mess. Whatever was doing this was a quiet professional. And that's not a dog. But Charlie still thinks it could be dogs. But what about the way the animal is killed? Don't dogs attack differently than cats? You can't say categorically that, that dogs will attack in a certain way. Some dogs will attack in a much more stealthy way and kill in a way that would be much more the way you'd expect for uh, an expert predator. So did Danny's camera catch a picture of the super predator? I checked the camera. Nothing made it go off. 
Not a single creature. Not even a squirrel. Well, looks like we didn't catch the beast on camera. I guess until someone finds solid evidence, it's pretty hard to say for sure whether the beast is a pack of dogs, a big cat, or something else. What could be so clever to outsmart the British military and local farmers? All I know is whatever is killing those animals is still out here somewhere. I'm on the hunt to find a species of sea monster called Cadborosaurus. I'm going out to the bay where the creatures have been spotted to see if I can capture one on camera. All set. It just disappeared. Look, there's something over there moving. What is it? Those are harbor seals. Oh, they're seals. I haven't seen anything that looks like a Cadborosaurus. But if there are sea monsters here, they sure have a lot of places to hide. I didn't see anything at sea. And caddy scan security cameras still haven't caught a live Cadborosaurus. But all these eyewitness reports can't be wrong. Or could they? Aiden Martin is the director of the Reef Quest Center for Shark Research. He knows about all sorts of big, dangerous ocean creatures. So what kind of animal do you think this is? Could it be a Cadborosaurus? Hmm. Well, uh, it'd be a lot of fun if it was, but um, I think this is a case of mistaken identity. This looks to me like the rotting carcass of a basking shark. A basking shark is one of the largest fish on the planet. It can grow to be as long as a city bus. Basking sharks have a really strange group behavior, where several animals will line up nose to tail like a submerged herd of circus elephants. Let me show you what I mean. From the surface, what you'd see would be something that would look a lot like this. It's very easy to interpret that as some kind of sea monster. And here's how a basket shark could give you the same shape. And if you have several of them lined up nose to tail, you could very easily have an animal that looks like it's two or three hundred feet long. So you're saying that what people think is a Cadborosaurus could just be a bunch of big sharks swimming in a line? Yeah, could be. Aiden, do you think that there could be a huge unidentified sea monster living in the waters off Vancouver Island? Well, it's possible, but the waters off Vancouver Island have been very well studied and fished and explored for centuries, so it's very unlikely. It may be unlikely, but it's still possible that a new species of sea monster is out there, just waiting to be discovered. I just hope nobody blinks if it decides to show up again. Those trigger cameras were so cool. Totally. They're also pretty useful for catching people doing things they're not supposed to. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, remember that time I thought you stole my lunch, but you swore you never, ever would do that? I knew it seemed too easy. Remember, Araya, things aren't always what they seem. <laughs>